So uh, we're here to talk about uh, this Crestron accessibility solution that uh, the awesome guys at NC State have uh, come up with, uh, one of whom is standing uh, beside me. But I guess before we do that, we should introduce ourselves. So I'm Sina Baram. Uh, I'm a doctoral student here in the Department of Computer Science uh, at NC State. Uh, I'm Ron Jalal. I work for Class Tech here at NC State doing the control systems programming and classroom design. So how this went down was I was asked to teach a class, uh, and uh, I'm blind, by the way, and so I have different devices that talk to me. For example, like here's an iPhone that talks to me, and it has a touch screen, but I'm still able to use it. And so how am I, um, you know, the, the Apple has put some accessibility things into that. And so uh, one of the things that's integral to somebody teaching a class, especially in an engineering uh, college, is uh, technology. And one of those pieces of technology to control things like the projector and the uh, microphone phone if you're wearing one as a teacher is uh, this Crestron panel which is what you uh, one of the things that one of the devices that you program correct and so uh, the problem was this is a touch screen as you can see there's basically there's no buttons and so if you're blind that might be rather difficult to use so how could we uh, take some of uh, some inspiration from things like the iPhone and other solutions uh, in, in research and in academia and, and make that accessible bring you the concepts of universal design and accessibility to to that that was the problem we were trying to solve so um, I, I mentioned this to Greg Krauss, who's our director of uh, accessibility here at NC State and our, our, our coordinator of accessibility. And uh, um, I, I, I guess he came and talked with you, right, mm -hmm. uh, originally. And, uh, and unbeknownst to me, uh, I, I was just mentioning this as a possible, a possible problem. How would I be able to pull down up and down the projector, that kind of thing? And then uh, uh, I, I, I show up for a meeting that Greg invites me to with you and a couple of other gentlemen and, uh, in uh, th th about a couple of weeks later. Later. And at that meeting, I basically am handed this device here, and uh, I'm told to, to swipe on it. And as you can see, things are moving, the, uh, the screen is going up and down, it can talk, and it basically has a gesture interface similar to that of the iPhone. And what's amazing about it, and what's really great, is actually unlike the iPhone in a way, this, uh, this is really truly uh, designed with universal design in mind, meaning that it doesn't limit one user group for another. So you might want to talk a little bit about, uh, for example, the, the gesture interface here that, uh, that, you've, uh, that you've developed, because I think it's, it's, it's really cool. Well, absolutely. The, Greg came to us. He had actually done a lot of research on his own. Uh, he looked on the manufacturer's website to see what solutions they offered, and their solutions weren't really viable for various reasons in terms of implementation and cost. Um, this, this is one of their latest model of touch panels, and just reading through the spec sheet, I noticed it supported gestures, and just with a little bit of tinkering and thinking, um, we devised you know, the idea of using gestures to control the interface. It has basically a virtual list style design where um, the items in the list correlate with what's System on the screen, ready. but it's not a direct correlation, and it's very uh, tailorable. The other big advantage for, in terms of the support side, was it didn't require any extra um, servers or any back-end hardware. It was using the exact same technology we were already using in our classroom. So it was all around an excellent solution, uh, very minimal cost. Uh, as he mentioned before, it's um, universal accessible. It doesn't interfere with the side interface and the um, blind users as well will have no problems using so it. So as a blind user, I'll, I'll use it in this way. And that's me navigating the virtual list. And then I'll let you use it in, in a different way, in actually a sighted way. Right, you can... Um, 59%, 58%. Room volume, 68%. Doc Cam, room volume, 60%. Yeah, so it so the way it works is when, a, when you swipe the gestures on it, it actually will block out the physical controls for about seven seconds so you don't accidentally switch sources. But once that's done, I can press buttons here. I can navigate the side interface just as it has always worked. And then once you swipe again, Laptop. it re reactivates the uh, gesture interface. And then I can go back to using it this Not way, right. Right. and so on and so forth, and then swiping to, to select. And the, and the actual visual design is absolutely unchanged from our standard classroom interface. Right. So it somebody looks, who didn't know about it, they wouldn't right. even know that it, it, it did that exactly. until, yeah, until said, they needed it. Yeah. Know, swipe on it. Exactly. So. Um, 
So I guess one other advantage uh, to this would be that, uh, for me at least, uh, I have a lot of um, uh, colleagues, you know, online, on Twitter, Facebook, that kind of thing, on email lists who might be blind or low vision that are asked to teach. And this isn't always in a college environment. Uh, sometimes it's in a corporate environment in which they have systems just like this and they want to give seminars. And they've always either had to ask for help or assistance to have somebody come in and, you know, set it up for them. Right. Uh, and what this allows us to do is that that really opens up that, that um, opportunity for somebody to do it independently. They can control the room themselves, they can walk into a classroom, teach a class from beginning to end and walk out and it's all completely accessible from beginning to end as opposed to as a professor having to rely on a student or as a, a, a professional in industry having to rely on an employee or on a colleague to just do something as simple as a giving a presentation which is something I think maybe as a sighted person you might take for exactly. granted, right? right. I mean, yeah. what, what's the big deal, right? Exactly. But, but for me it was a challenge until Right. we had the system. And that was also a challenge in actually the design of the system. There's a lot of considerations that as a sighted person you don't even think about in terms of how an, uh, a blind person might interact with something. And it was a really very interesting, very intriguing learning opportunity and it's something that um, after working on this I actually think about just in my everyday life, you know, if I was designing any other system, how would this work in terms of a universal, universal uh, accessibility um, type of paradigm. Yeah. So. Um, uh, one question I was curious about, you mentioned you had worked in a, with a lot of places. Do you see any future opportunities or future areas of improvement in terms of classrooms that... So right now, um, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of technology being integrated into classrooms, not only, for example, like what we have now, the projector, right. being able to switch input uh, sources, going from a dot cam to my laptop to the desktop here. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, I'm seeing this idea of auxiliary uh, devices coming into classrooms. Mm -hmm. People want to start using it with their iPad. People want to start using it with their server back in the office or, or whatnot. And the nice thing about a technology like this is that it's generalizable to that. So for example, right. uh, it, this is a Crestron panel, but it could actually be another vendor and we could use the same approaches and the same technologies or it could be an iPad interface for something and we can use those same approaches to make that kind of interface accessible. Oh, yeah, and to me that's that's a big deal because any any solution that's generalizable mm -hmm. as opposed to just very specific to one thing uh, is is one worth uh, pursuing because it'll actually be relevant one year from now. I mean you know how fast technology changes oh, yeah, but that'll still be made accessible to somebody who um, who, uh, who, can't, uh, who can't see. I think the only thing that would be, uh, I, I can think of a particular user group, uh, might be uh, uh, somebody who is uh, both blind and deaf. I have a colleague who's a, who's a programmer, he's a developer, mm -hmm. he uses Braille to interact with the wow. world. So one thing would be, instead of having speech output only on here, we could look at having this communicate, and this has abilities to communicate oh, over absolutely. the network. Mm -hmm. We could have this communicate with a Braille display, they could bring along their Braille display with them, and get that output that way, instead of just only from the speech. That would be one, one augmentation for the future. Okay, interesting. So I think uh, it's probably... Um, okay, and I know we've been throwing out the term universal design. Can you maybe describe what that really means in terms of the accessibility world? Sure. So, uh, for example, let's step away from the accessibility world to, to, to describe it. Uh, uh, have you, if you've been to the airport uh, recently, you might notice a lot of people uh, take advantage of the sloped sidewalks, right, mm -hmm. to go to the curb, the sloped right. curbs, uh, even though they might not be in a wheelchair, right? right. And that's really the, the one, of, one of the concepts of, of, or examples of universal design in that it's designed to, to do things the right way to enable one user group, but in no way detracts from others. So it helps people with luggage. Women with strollers absolutely get a huge advantage uh, from that. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to hop the, the stroller over the curb. Um, but maybe a more digital example of di universal design is something like captioning videos for uh, deaf and hard of hearing. So you might think, well, it's great. We have the text of a video for somebody who can't hear, and that is obviously a really big advantage, right? But uh, how does it help the sighted users? How does it right. help somebody else? So uh, I, there's so many ways that it does. For example, let's say in, we're in a college environment here. Your roommate is asleep, and you're trying to watch lectures before an exam, right? And so you can leave it on mute, and you can follow along with the subtitle. So that's one way. Another way is that uh, you, these captions can be indexed by search engines. So all of 
of a sudden, not only do you get the advantage of helping users who are deaf or users who might be wanting to use it in a low noise environment, but Google and Bing and other search engines can index your site and actually bring the user to the exact correct place that they're searching for in your video. So all of a sudden, you have these hours of video online and you've enabled them to become this rich, searchable database of content, which is a huge deal. And it's a completely, uh, you know, an auxiliary benefit from just labeling it or just giving it text so that somebody who can't hear can. can so basically, it as well. the idea is rather than being a burden, adding these accessibility things may have the effect of enhancing or Absolutely. expanding what the and, use case is. And the, and the biggest thing is the component that you're adding to the system mm -hmm. to help it become more universally designed or mm -hmm. add accessibility in, in no way detracts from other user groups and has this almost synergistic more than the sum of the parts effect, which is the really, I mean, that's my favorite part, where I, I've designed something where you designed this, for example, mm -hmm. and then somebody comes up to you and says, you know, I, I was using that the other day when so-and-so was going on. And it has nothing to do with the original purpose that, right. that you designed it for. That's a huge benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much for helping us develop the system. It's been a, a great learning experience. I think um, we will be better off in the long run from what we've learned in terms of future design of the class. Well, thank you very much. This has been, I mean, this has really opened up uh, the world for, you know, uh, uh, people to teach the, somebody who's vision impaired or blind to be able to teach more independently. And that's a, that's a really big deal. So thank you. Excellent.